Well, for more on the booming music market in China, let's bring in Phil Gallo. Phil is a senior editor at Hits Magazine, a music industry trade publication. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, as we heard there, the Grammy Museum recently announced its first international expansion in China. Tell us, how significant is that? Well, the Grammy Museum is a, is, is a wonderful building. It started in Los Angeles. They just opened in Newark, uh, New Jersey. Uh, it's, it's growing. It's not connected exactly to the Grammy Awards. It's very much music history, much in the way that uh, the Rock and Roll Museum in Cleveland uh, ha has a similar purpose. Uh, it, it's very much artifacts. It obviously has the support of, of the Recording Academy, uh, and, it, and it does a lot in terms of education. So I think uh, to get into China and to perhaps really open eyes to a history of music they haven't been exposed to uh, would work wonders. And so why do you think we're now seeing the Grammys and these other major music labels really stepping up their presence in China? Audience. I think that that's the number one reason. And I think that streaming uh, has allowed them to go day and date or else really close so they can be very current. So perhaps somebody learns about a hit record in London or a hit record in the United States, uh, it becomes accessible pretty quickly. Um, back in the days of both manufacturing and censorship, you, you, you never knew how long it would take to get a record out in China. Now, what about non-Chinese musicians? What are they doing at the moment to really tap into the Chinese audience? It's kind of fascinating. I mean, I was talking to some people, you know, about a year, a year and a half ago. They were really looking for ways to get into the Chinese marketplace, uh, both editorially, uh, through magazine articles, through, through television interviews. Um, they really wanted to do tours. Uh, how could they connect uh, both in English and in, in Chinese languages so that um, that audience would get a taste of, of, of bands popular in, in the U.S. and the U.K.? So in terms of that, are Chinese artists really trying to emulate Western and American museums, mu musicians as a way to enter those markets, or are they really exporting their own unique brand? Well, I mean, what we've seen that's been kind of fascinating when we look at at the charts over here in the U.S., uh, particularly when we watch the movement on iTunes, um, we're seeing a lot of Asian artists uh, suddenly race up the iTunes charts in the middle of the week. Quite often they're releasing songs uh, on days that uh, Western artists are not releasing, and so they, they become very prominent for 24, 48, even 72 hours. Um, most of those are Korean acts uh, or Japanese acts and some, an occasional Chinese act. Uh, I think that what it becomes is they are leaning toward Western styles, but whereas we're so you sectionalize this is hip hop, this is pop, this is dance. Uh, I feel that the, the greatness of, of the, the Asian marketplaces is, is they're willing to kind of mesh them all together and come up with something that's unique. So in terms of opportunities, what do you think this greater connection between some of these um, Western brands and, and overseas markets, what sort of opportunities could that, could that open up for Chinese artists? I think that they, it's really going to depend on can you find that one artist that's really going to click uh, with an audience in the United States that goes beyond uh, just the ethnic base? Um, you know, just to use an example, we're looking at Despacito, uh, you know, up for two big awards tomorrow in the Grammys. Um, Spanish language songs, you, generally speaking, are not considered in that category. And it's been a if not ever, uh, the top-selling record is not in English in the United States. So uh, I think that what we've seen happen uh, in Spanish, um, it, it's quite possible we will now start to see uh, in other languages, particularly from Asia. And I think it will take, a, you know, a star like a Justin Bieber embracing it and bringing it over. So in terms of your outlook and to, for artists who would like to come from China to the U.S. or say the U.S. to China, what sort of advice would you give them about really getting to know the market as a way to enter it? You know, I, I think, I think the, the thing is that the other beauty of streaming is that there is a lot of detail uh, provided that 
there are tools that, that whether it's uh, Shazam or it's Spotify they are Apple Music, uh, that they're giving the audience. So the, uh, they're giving the artist, pardon me, they can tell where their audience is and to get to hit those marketplaces. So you're not wasting your time. Uh, let's show up in Florida and all of a sudden there's, there's only two people at the gig when, truth be told, in Chicago, uh, you could sell out a, a nice size club. So know your audience. Thank you so much. Phil Gallo there, Senior Editor at Hits Magazine.